Hello everyone. I hope that you're doing well and having a great day. I would like to just talk about what we can consider as facts and what are still considered rumors when it comes to what's circulating online around this case. So um, I'll start off with ones that we can consider as facts. So the first one I'll talk about is the fact that um, whether he's considered to be the only suspect, right? Um, there's discussion by many, many channels, many people on whether there is a second person. And they're getting that furthermore from the statement of um, the, the supposed statement from Brian of, did you arrest anyone else? And so uh, there's actually two answers with this, um, two different things that could be considered fact when it comes to that. So I'm going to actually take you over here to one statement that was made by the police chief. And so we should just go with what we are hearing, what the police say, right? What does the police say about it? We truly believe we have the individual that committed these crimes. We truly believe we have the individual that committed these crimes. Right. I'll take you over here to a second um, second one here that says Idaho murder suspect Brian likely acted alone. And that is according to the police as well. And so there it is. It's top. This comes from the New York Post. But it says that Fox News was told Saturday. So it's been put out by two different affiliates here, um, or I don't know if they're affiliated with each other or not, but from two different media outlets, right, that have stated, this says, the suspect in the murder of four University of Idaho students is believed to have acted alone, authority said Saturday. Quote, we truly believe we have the individual that committed these crimes. James Fry, the police chief in Moscow, told Fox News on Saturday. And so he was arrested Friday, Saturday. They're still saying, we believe we have the individual that committed the crimes. So that we can consider a fact. We don't have to be questioning whether or not there is a second person. And um, as a matter of fact, if we were to consider whether or not there, you know, there is a, a second person based off of the statement, did you arrest anyone else? Right. And I do know that that was Brian Enton that had put that out. And it, I'm not saying that that's that true. He very well could have said that to Brian. It could be true. Uh, but what we can go with at this point <clears throat> is that Brian's attorney, his name is Labar, right? He stated when this reporter, she is a correspondent and a host for Law and Crime. She asked whether BK had asked police, quote, did you arrest anyone else? And Labar said that BK doesn't recall saying that. Could he be lying? Of course. Of course he could, right? He, he very well could. But at this point, we basically got to just roll with this until some type of footage, audio comes out and you actually hear him say it. Right at that point, you know that BK completely lied and is now trying to cover that and say, oh, no, I never said that. I don't say that. Um, but moving forward, instead of everybody being so hung up on, oh, well, that statement that he made, uh, did you arrest anyone else? That, that must mean that there's got to be somebody else that helped, right? It must mean that. Well, no, it doesn't. One, he is saying exactly what we're talking about. He does not recall saying that. And let's say, even if he did say it, there are many reasons that he could have said it that that do not equal there was somebody else involved. He could have just been trying to throw the police off. There have been other killers that have made that same statement as well. So could he be trying to imitate one of them? Or could he have actually just simply been concerned about whether his father had been arrested for helping him drive the car back to Pennsylvania? So there's many reasons if he did say it, that don't mean technically that there was somebody else involved. But as of right now, the 
attorney is saying that BK does not recall saying that. So um, that was one of the other things that at this point we could consider this a fact more than running with a rumor of, well, he must, he said that, so I think it might mean this and, and it did, right? I mean, come on. Um, and then another is, uh, let me see. Okay, so uh, this is starting to circulate more, right? It was definitely on Facebook. I saw a lot of people talking about it on Facebook and in the groups. And now it's getting called in on some of the um, creators' channels that do call-ins, uh, except people are calling it in and they're stating it as a fact. And it's not a fact. It is not. Okay. What is a fact is that these individuals are claiming that they have nothing to do with it. What am I talking about? Okay. I'm talking about the fact that there is a couple and their last name is a hyphenated name. One of the names is the last name of Kaylee. The other last name is the last name of Brian. And so question has been for me, and I not, was not going to report on it until I could prove it and that there was a connection. I never found a connection. In fact, I found that a lot of the family that was connected to this couple are out of the country. And they're, they're foreign. They're out of the country. That they, they aren't even, no. So nobody on, in Kaylee's family had any connection, any on social media. There was nobody that linked back to this couple. And the couple, before they locked their social media down, none of theirs linked back to Kaylee's family. So I hadn't found any proof to say that it was true. And so, sure, is it quite a coincidence that of of all the names that you would find people that have the last name of each of them? Yes, it's very ironic. It really is. I was like, wow, if that's true, right? That would be horrible if that's true. And, and that's how he even was aware of Kaylee was because their family is married to one another. Man, that would be so sad. That would be so sad. Uh, but there is no proof of that at all. And in fact, the people, the couple had come out on social media and stated, we are not connected to this at all. We are not related to them at all. And we would like our privacy. And so I think it's fair to say it is a fact that they are not related. That is not the connection. And we should leave them alone and give them their privacy uh, until law enforcement states that they are, in fact, connected and related. Uh, so long as that doesn't happen, then we should just take the word of these people that they have nothing to do with it and leave them alone. <clears throat> and then um, another one that's it's kind of a. I mean, it's it's now a fact, right? But. It's uh, information that wasn't initially uh, put out there correctly. And, and so it's kind of a, it's just a correction, right? Uh, reason that it matters is because a lot of people are going off of numbers. They think that numbers are going to solve this crime, right? I don't know. I, I guess you believe what you want to believe, right? Um, however, Monroe County District Attorney Office said the arrest for Brian happened around 1.45 a.m. Eastern Time. The initial reports said 3 a.m. So if you remember when we first reported this, it has been put out that the police went in and got him out of his parents' home at 3 a.m. And Monroe County District Attorney Office is saying no. Actually, it was not 3 a.m. It was 1.45. So... Um, different, a little bit of a correction there on the time change. It's really not that important to the majority of people, but those that are hung up on time, I heard a whole entire discussion about it on a stream last night about how ironic it is that they think the police purposely waited, right? Oh man, this guy committed a crime. He killed them around three o'clock in the morning and the police purposely waited to go and get him at three o'clock in the morning. I mean, I don't know. It's so I think that those kind of conversations can probably come to a stop. 
uh, they, they probably don't need to continue when in fact the, the time has been corrected. So um, that was another one. And then also this one here isn't technically, I mean, it's fact, but uh, not, you know, it's just, a, it's a estimated time, just a, a little bit of info. So um, Labar, the attorney for Brian, uh, Brian has said they were unsure how quickly his client would be returned to Idaho following his intent to waive extradition at Tuesday's hearing, saying that it would be based on authorities. But Labar expected him to be returned to Idaho within 72 hours of the proceeding. And so it can be as early, I've seen, um, as early as Tuesday night that he may get to Idaho. And then you can look and, and guess that it may be around uh, 72 hours, right, at, at the most. And so uh, also, <clears throat> um, that being said, he is not going to be um, the attorney for Brian for, for the actual case, right? He's only attorney for him right now for the extradition hearing. And that's it. Once he gets to Idaho, he's going to have to get another attorney. And I know that his parents are worried at this moment in time. They don't think that they will be able to afford it. <clears throat> it, it is going to be rather expensive. And so um, we'll see what happens when, when he gets there. His attorney now has said that he does anticipate it to be a capital case and that he doesn't want Brian to be tried in the court of public opinion to wait until the facts come out. And let's not assume anything. It's important that you don't jump to conclusions. Um, I think that that's, I think that's what the internet is absolutely the best at doing is jumping to conclusions. And so it is something that I think everybody needs to be a little bit careful of. Um, I, I do think so. And then I wanted to see, it. Mm, there was one more thing here that I want to show you. And this one is something that we can consider a fact, right? A big discussion that's been going on is whether or not he had committed the crimes and then got to thinking and was like, oh man, the car, Ugh, they know about it. I, I got to get it out of here. You know, I got, let me contact my dad and get my dad here to, to get the car back to Pennsylvania. And it has been put out by, again, the attorney he said that BK's father flew out to Washington to drive back with him to Pennsylvania for the Christmas break. However, Labar said that was planned before BK went to Washington for the fall semester that dad would fly out and drive back with him. He believes this happened between December 13th through the 16th. And so um, at this point, we can consider this a fact. And not everyone be, oh, well, how suspicious is that? And that means that the father must have known something. And no, we don't know. At this point, we don't know. Until it can be proven that the father in some way knew what he had done and was trying to help him evade, uh, then no, the dad's not going to be held accountable for anything. Um, if he didn't know anything, he didn't do anything on purpose. This was already planned. So it basically went down in a way that he was going to be going to fall semester and they came up with a game plan. And so the game plan was that Brian was going to drive his car out to Washington. So he had it with him for his semester. And then at the end of the semester, his dad would fly out, meet him, and then they could drive the car back together, back to Pennsylvania for the holiday break. That's it. That's it. That's all. Um, very reasonable. I, don't see that that's um, weird at all. I totally see that being a possibility. So uh, at this point, that would be considered a fact. That's something that people um, could start, you know, speaking on if they're going to talk about this, that this is something that was planned well in advance. I don't think that it was uh, a way that he was trying to evade the police and get his car hidden. Could he have, and let's play like, you know, the other side here. Could Brian have been planning to murder somebody during fall semester and would want a quick way out? And so he's like, I'll wait till the end of semester to kill people. And then it's okay because, you know, then I'll have dad come out and then we'll drive back. Sure, he could have. But, I mean, guys, that's, let's just keep things, just keep them with the facts here. 
and, and not be stretching everything, right? And so I think that it's pretty safe to say that I, I don't think that was what was happening there. Um, but anyway, and then um, the the things that are at this point rumor, and there is no basis for facts around them at this point in time. Um, I'll just give you the the rundown on them. <clears throat> I'm not going to show them because some of them are uh, rather inappropriate. So uh, the first one would be the Reddit post that people are claiming was him. And it was him posting as himself, stating, you know, without saying his name, right? But stating that I, as himself, had committed a crime. This is what I did at the completion. You know, this is how I did it, right? What he did to the woman. And then what he did before he left and then stated he went to Pennsylvania and good luck finding me, right? So if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, right? So that Reddit post at this point cannot be proven to be a fact at all. It is just something that people are thinking that came from, I believe the 4chan, um, it's on Reddit, either way. It, it can't. So when it's being discussed, I've seen a lot of people coming on and they're like, well, yeah, he did a post on, on Reddit, right? And also uh, the call that he made to the creator, you know, and he was all over the internet. You cannot claim that to be a fact. You can't. It, there is no proof that that's him. All right. So when it comes out and it's proven by police that, yes, in fact, that did come from his computer uh, the, the IP address, the etc. right? That's a different story. But at this point in time, it is unknown. And so I, I think that everyone needs to quit speaking on it as though it is, in, in fact, um, true. And then we'll go, that leads us into the second one, which is the call to the creator in that it was definitely him. We don't know that. We don't know that. That's something that the police will determine and they, they can let us know. So in the meantime, we should not be calling and talking on, on these different groups and saying, like, he definitely made these phone calls and was talking to them in that he was discussing the murders to them. No, we don't know that. Also, um, another one is his social media account. Um, besides a, I believe it's Spotify, right, that has no nothing on it for you to even see except one picture. And who even knows if that's him at this point? Um, his family friends had stated that he didn't even have social media. So it, when you're looking at it, there are a bunch of accounts that got made after he got arrested. They all were under his name. And they're clearly not all him, if any of them are even him. Uh, one of them started to follow the victims and ran off and followed and and. People are believing that this was him that did that. No, you can't prove that it's him. Can't prove it. It. We have no indication that that was definitely his account. Also, the most likely of the accounts also can't be proven to be him either, which is the one that has the video that was posted before the murders even happened. And it, again, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It's got the video of a bat beating somebody with it, showing blood, and it getting washed off. It's pretty shocking. If, in fact, that were his account, that would be pretty, pretty startling. As of today, there isn't proof that that is definitely his account at all. And so... Uh, let me see. And then one more was the, um, the video that was done, um, in front of a laptop, right? And so they were discussing that they knew details of the crime, right? And again, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Um, this one stated that, um, just to give a little bit of it, that one of the victims screamed very loudly and that they then took her life and then fled because of the fact that she had screamed so loudly. Now, that one, they were sitting in front of a laptop. The screen went off from playing a video. And the person recognized that they could see their reflection. And so they moved their camera 
cell phone, you know, to a different angle. And uh, you did see like a piece of paper with writing go across the screen and it said words like bloody and, and whatnot on it. Um, <clears throat> again, we can't prove that that's him. We just can't. And so, yes, I see all, all these things and it would be crazy. I agree. If, if he was all over social media and he was putting out videos, putting out Reddit posts, putting out calls to creators, I mean, all of these things, it'd be pretty crazy. But at this point in time, we don't know if any of it's true or connected to him. And so I think that we need to work on trying to be a little more responsible as creators and, and as viewers that we're not going from place to place and and having discussions as though these are true uh, factual events that happened by him. We don't know. And so anyway, those are, those are the four things that at this point cannot be proven to be connected to him. Um, so that was just a little bit just to clear up um, some of the differences between what can, we can consider facts. And I gave you the information to that so that you could see there is a backup reason why it could be considered a fact and then um the things that are are at this point just a rumor because there is no way to prove otherwise and we need to rely on law enforcement to let us know if in fact any of those are connected to him um so that's all that i want to talk to you about in this video but i hope that you all have a really good day i am sure that there is plenty more that are um things being said that are flying around if you could think of any you could put them in the comment section for me and uh but these are just ones that just last night i heard just these alone and i was like oh man you know i i need to clear this up so um but yeah if you think of any let me know i hope that you all have a really good day and i'll talk to you all very very soon take care